I have both versions, but I don't have PS Plus, so I don't know if you need that for Street Fighter 4 because I've literally Street Fighter 5 because I've literally never tried to play Street Fighter 5 online on PS4 since the beta. I mostly use it for other stuff. じゃあ、今晩、えっと、えっと、1アストレアジン、シニン、えっと、アメリカ人、えっと、7人アメリカ人、えっと、4、4人とも、2人、あ、カナダ人、2人カナダ人、そうですね、終わります、止まります。で、
<laughs> yeah, it's you can play on either one. It doesn't matter. Still winning. Oh my god, Elena's hitbox. No, he needs to get the hit. I don't like running away. Yeah, that was a fuck up. Necro could get the last hit too easily. He was far better at being aggressive. The Elena. Elena can get like a random hit high or low quite easily. Her mix-up is good. He was being he was being too patient. That was a fat misplay, in my opinion. I think I think you can win. Okay. Oh, she's unthrowable for most of that. Stand hard kick. Back hard kick also has a shit ton of unthrowability, including from the very first frame. Well, oh, the fade away into low strong, but he failed to confirm. You have to watch for the uh, tech, or else just react really fast because she can inherently, she can inherently confirm her low strong because that's a long cancel window, but it's hard. It's like a, a harder version of Chun Li's crush medium kick. It's also not a low, and she also like you know can't mix up as easily to force the opponent to get hit by it. She does have a car throw, but... Oh, nice parry. Going from down back to a down parry is harder than it looks. That was actually really good. It doesn't really matter how much um, meter you use to win with Elena, I feel. Your meter is just not very useful. If you want to use all of your bar to win a round when, you're, when it's like, you know... If you want to try and win a round that you're losing, it's totally fine. It's like not worth it to save meter with Elena. If you get an opportunity, opportunities are so rare that you should just take them no matter when they show up. Uh, Relentless theme was also good. This is like, this is really hard to win now. He basically needs to get a perfect. Elena's any touch will kill him. Like the only thing that won't kill him is like a light normal. <laughs> He could honestly just turtle out this 55 seconds if he wanted to, but he should definitely just put a little bit of pressure on. Oh, nice touch. Yeah, both of them, like, <laughs> this Elena player is making this take a lot longer than it needs to. He's got a pretty comfortable win if he wants it. Just between, like, the overhead and, like, EX Mallet Smash and, like, just poking. There it is. <laughs> this matchup has long been considered to be quite a hard matchup. I remember I was with uh, Duralath and a couple of the other Third Strike South, um, SoCal guys. And um, they like asked me about aura matchups and I listed Elena as a bad matchup and both of them looked at me, whoever it was, I forget, I think Darlath was one of them. Both of them looked at me like I was fucking insane. It's like Elena is a bad matchup for aura, you're just bad. And then they opened up uh, Kuroda's tier list and Kuroda listed Elena aura as like a 7-3 and they were like, oh. It's because her crouch. It's because of a lot of reasons. It's because of the way she falls out of juggles. It's because of the way her normals interact with Oro's normals basically nullify his entire neutral. It's because her air to airs are quite good. It's because her anti air is quite good between EX Mallet and. Not EX Mallet. Well, yeah, I guess EX Mallet and EX Rhino Horn. The EX Rhino Horn, even if you parry it, it's like safe for her generally. And um, if you get hit, it leads to a pretty big combo. So that hurts Oro's ability to approach on the ground, which is his main. Like usually, the thing about Chun Li is like it's hard to it's hard to use your ground normals because she crouches so low, but then you can at least jump in a lot. But Elena, you can't even jump in a lot because she's got really good air airs and really good anti airs. That changes stuff a lot. Oh no, super! That was like a good. That was that was most of a good punish. That was the EX Rhino Horn. Not even that risky to attempt. She's got air tower combos too, to make things that much harder. She also can't be crossed up in the corner, and you can't use overhead to um, overhead to launch your links in Super Three. So basically, his main, a lot of his good shit with Super Two doesn't work, and a lot of his good shit with Super Three doesn't work. No, oh, I dropped it. He did a really bad combo. See that that works on almost every character. It doesn't work on Oro. It doesn't work on Elena. And it doesn't work on Chun Li. So those matchups are kind of annoying. I used to use that setup a lot, but now I like never use it. 
I know a lot about that matchup. It's hard for Oro, but it's definitely not unwinnable because Oro, in and of himself, is still a stronger character than Elena. So even though he has to fight like a really awkward footsie battle, like he still has better tools overall. <laughs> Elena is a bully to low tier characters. Her footsies are so good. A lot of the low tier characters are bad because they have kind of bad footsies. Uh, just follow my Twitter. If you don't have a Twitter, then get one. Or just fucking, you know, be in the Discord around the general time. It'll be on a, it'll be a sticky post in the Discord too. Tabun means probably. Nice punish. Alex doesn't have very good things to do after a far parry. EX chop is like the one you usually see. Nice. Very nice jump in. That does so much damage and stun. That was like 40% stun. And like 30% health. Alex hurts. Oh, mm, that stun is becoming a problem. Stun, unlike every other Street Fighter, stun just remains for a long fucking time in Street Fighter 3. I think Alpha doesn't have stun at all. No, wait. I don't remember if Alpha has stun. Yeah, it does. It does have stun. I just remembered Alpha's stun. But um, with Street Fighter 2, Alpha 4, and 5, if you just don't get hit for a little bit, your stun is just back to zero. You need like crazy momentum to actually dizzy someone. In this game, it's really quick. And it lasts a really long time. The only bad thing about stun in this game, I feel, is that um, certain characters stun really easily, but certain characters don't stun at all. I'm fine with keeping the characters who stun easily exactly the way they are, but it feels like if Chun-Li like, lands... It feels like, like, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about a buff to Chun-Li here, Jesus Christ. It feels like if Chun-Li gets one of her rare, like, if they just increased, if they just, like, gave Chun-Li, like, literally, like, 30% stun on, like, regular spinning bird kick. And it's like, well, well, I don't know, because spinning bird kick is really hard to use on some characters and really abusable on other characters. That would be a bad example. But some attack that Chun-Li doesn't land that often. If close hard kick just had like fucking 20% stun on it. Chun-Li's close hard kick actually is one of her only attacks that has good stun. Chun-Li can actually stun you. She's one of the characters that gets stuns occasionally. The problem is there are so many characters who don't get any stuns at all. And it's just like, if, if, if you get momentum, you should be able to stun as anyone. But it's only about half the cast who can realistically dizzy you. And most characters have just one attack that does all of their dizzy output. It's like fucking Yang's dizzy is terrible apart from EX Rekka, which is quite good. Every other uh, attack doesn't have that much done at all. Yang has momentum really easily though, and EX Rekka is something he's always trying to land. Huh. That's a weird ender. We did roundhouse instead of stomp into roundhouse. I don't think it's any sort of Alex related thing. He could have cancelled that. I understand why he didn't, but he could have. Alex is a bit awkward in 3. It feels like they were really, really reserved with him, but not very reserved with other characters. It's like they were really careful to make sure that it was really hard to land hard chop and medium chop because they're so rewarding. They were really careful to about his cancels. But then at the end of the day, it's almost, it's almost, medium chop is like borderline unusable. And his cancels are really, really bad. Or maybe not, his medium cancels are quite good, but he has no heavy cancel and his light cancels are awful. Like, I feel like Alex should be able to do low short into EX flash chop. It's like, comboing from a low would be so useful for him. And blocking it behind meter would be fine. Alex is well balanced in a game of not very good balance. That's the problem. They were like careful to make Alex's good shit really hard to land, but then Makoto gets a command grab 
Mikado has like a safe command grab that does all your health. But Alex was in Street Fighter 3 since New Generation, and Makoto was a Third Strike edition. All, all the characters who were in, who were added in Third Strike, have kind of terrible balance. Remy is really bad. Q is mm, Q is a question mark. Um, 12 is fucking awful. Chun Li is fucking good. Makoto is fucking good. I would tentatively say Jerry's a good example of that, yeah. Yeah, you look at like Jerry's dive kick and then you look at like Rufus's dive kick. And it's just like this is like this is like a dive kick for a different game. Or like Kami's is a better example for a special move dive kick. I know Kami is a lot more themed around her dive kick. Like Kami has less to do besides the dive kick. Whereas Jury's dive kick is just an icing on the cake move, she can function entirely without it. And it's not useless, but it's so specific. Like literally Kami's Kami's Street Fighter 5 dive kick is very similar to Jury's Street Fighter 4 dive kick. Do I have second impact? That's the second version of this game. <laughs> Pressure being too rewarded is very subjective. I would say tentatively that it is extremely rewarded compared to all other Street Fighter games, except this one. But also, I like that, so... Two is, two is, two is not something I would agree with. I think um, Street Fighter Five is just right about how rewarded, how rewarding it is for offense. I think the only problem is that not all characters are offensive, which I know that sounds like not a problem. I mean, that sounds like a big problem. For that, I'm not a problem. Fuck, I had it right the first time. It sounds like not all characters should be offensive. It's more that I want every character to have the capacity to turtle and every character to have the capacity to zone. <laughs> I understand that that would be nearly impossible. My ideal world would have good zoning characters and good rushdown characters. And it's fine if they're only good at one or the other, as long as the game is balanced. People generally like Alpha Series for its um, Street fighter -iness. They feel like it has just the right amount of everything. Alpha 2 and Alpha 3 both have bad ish balance and some pretty bad uh, issues with um, the neutral. Maybe not the neutral, with combos. But the neutral is usually regarded as some of the best neutral in the entire series. When you disregard those really broken parts. Everyone's like, well, like Alpha has all these bad things, but it's the most fun. I've heard similar things from Third Strike players. It's like, well, yeah, the balance is bad, but it's fun. That's my opinion on Third Strike. I'm saying I heard it from other people, but like I could just say, I could just cite myself as a source. Oh. There are very few actual 50-50s in any Street Fighter game. Sometimes it's restrictively difficult to like make it to 33, 33-33 though. Like for example, Chun-Li's car throw. Like if Chun-Li knocks Q over, she can go for a car throw or she can um, go for a left forward super of particular timing. And it's really hard for Q to say use a reversal to beat both of those options. Because in order to beat the car throw with the reversal, he needs to hit like the four startup frames of the throw. With his super. He basically needs to super in an incredibly tight window. And that tight window might be like immediately after blocking a normal. Or like it might be at any fucking given time in the middle of neutral. And it's fucking massively risky to do. And Q has no other like invincible, throw invincible attack. Throw invincible, hit invincible attack. Nice timing. 
Okay, nice got on. Sun Gamare RPA. The tier disparity on the street out in Alpha 2 is literally only better because there are fewer characters. Alpha 2 already has some really fucked up balance, and Alpha 3 has even be even way beyond fucked up balance. Third Strike is more balanced. Third Strike, when it came out, was the most balanced Street Fighter game. Uh, 2 is just awful balance, and fucking the Versus series is awful balance too. This game was a paragon of balance when it came out, but of course we've gotten a lot better at balancing fighting games. We like I'm trying to take credit. Devs have gotten a lot better at balancing fighting games. I would agree the roster is more varied though. I would say it's more solid for that reason. There's more like like offense and defense. I feel like fireballs are a little weak though. Both Street Fighter 3 and Street Fighter Alpha were uh, right after right after uh, Street Fighter 2. And the big perception of Street Fighter 2 was it was way too stalemate because of the fireball spam. So both Street Fighter Alpha and Street Fighter 3 tried really hard to not be fireball spam. There's more of a mix-up in footsies in Third Strike compared to Alpha, which I appreciate a lot. Obviously because of parries, but just overheads have way better distribution in uh, 3 compared to Alpha. There aren't that many overheads in Alpha. Earliest, huh? This must be right before the um, Capcom Cup, or maybe right after. Held January 2016, 14th. Yep. The problem with Street Fighter 3 is that the only zoning, the only really dedicated zoning characters have bad balance. Whereas Rushdown mix-up is fucking most of the cast. You mean right now? Because Zangief was really good in Alpha. Um, Zangief is not that weak right now. I don't even know what game you're referring to. Zangief is very strong. In Alpha. Zangief hasn't been weak in a game recently apart from Season 1 of Street Fighter V. Jesus, that was an accidental input. I saw that. He got jumped over and he got accidental charge. That's not the kind of move you would ever do there. He just tried to hit kick, but Q has charge moves for both kick and punch on back charge. I get that with Oro. Like, people jump over me and then I do, like, say medium punch and it gets a medium fireball. And I've, like, phased away so that every time I'm in that scenario, I just automatically hit medium kick instead of medium punch. And it's got less reward, but I never get the accidental puts. I feel like Eve is still one of the worst characters in Street Fighter V. Not because he's really... that he's got bad matchups. Well, yeah, that he's got bad matchups. His net matchups are not the worst by a long shot. He's got some pretty good matchups now. The problem is that he ha he's like he still got the worst counter picks of any character, which is the biggest thing stopping him from the biggest thing stopping any character from viability. Tournament viability. You need to have no like bad counter picks if you want to be able to win a tournament. But Geef still like Geef still dies if he fights a Dalsim. Ooh. Oh, he shook out. Nice. Good shaking. A good wake up DP. In terms of risk reward, no. That's the whole point. Well, I shouldn't say no. I mean, like, fucking look at Oken or. Yeah, look at Oken. Kenny has a pretty good DP in Street Fighter 2. Probably her best, her best uh, trait. Wow, how about that? 
ジャンプ大ゲートやっていくナミやっていきますわアリエス<笑>うるさいよ<笑> The problem with Geef is literally every weakness he has could be solved by green hand That is just Geef's defect right now I'm not, I'm not sure how I feel about giving a green hand I understand why they didn't do it and I understand what they're trying to do with him They want him to have weaknesses But the problem is it's really frustrating right now that literally they could just fix him because every single thing he's bad at, it's like fucking fireballs in neutral. It's like getting close against the opponent mashing zoning. It's like staying in. It's like fucking chasing down back dashes. It's like, uh, fucking, I don't know, mobility in general. Literally everything he struggles with was something the green hand did. This could kill. This could kill. Oh. Harley has no Tominaga. That's the easy combo. Wow, I actually kind of like that idea, Epsilon. Turn Geef Greenhand into Mika Clap. It's literally because of the RSPD. They cannot have Geef get in for free because of the RSPD. It's dumb though because the RSPD is still a really bad attack. Like, it's great at what it does, which is almost nothing. That's the problem. Is that it's so unsafe, but it requires such a hard read to use. If there is one command grab in all of Street Fighter V that should be safe, it is absolutely Geef Air SPD. They should all have the recovery with the X1. And the X1 should be invincible. That's how they should actually do it. That's the balance Geef needs. <laughs> it's way too hard to fucking predict a jump and then air SPD. It's not worth it. It's never worth it. Even if you're right, it doesn't pay off. Like, like you have to be right so many times to pay off every time you're wrong. And it's such a hard, aggressive read to make. It's so hard to get momentum, then you have to just potentially throw it away. And it doesn't even beat all air attacks. Like, someone could do, like, jump back light normal. And even if you jump forward with a fucking... And jump back light normal is often good against Keef anyway. Even if you jump forward with your SPD, you can't fucking get past the invincible air attack they're doing. Air SPD eats up design space. Geef should be the scariest character when he gets close to you. Oh, that bad punish. You have to react to where Makoto's going sometimes. Nice. This can't kill, he can't get enough stun. He didn't even do the right ender. <laughs> Makoto has some invincibility after neutral throw. She's actually minus after neutral throw, and the way that the devs fixed it was to make it so her animation has invincibility unless she hits a button, and she remained neutral there. So she's got like a decent amount of invincibility as soon as neutral throw ends, but if you do anything, the invincibility goes away. Like even like crouch, even like block, even move. But that was neutral throw, and Ryu did a um, reversal EX fireball. His parry is really good. The only bad thing about it is it's uh, uh, is the fact that it takes white damage. Like, Geef's parry would make any other character incredible. Geef's problem is definitely not his parry. It's not a focus because it's literally better than a focus in every way. It's all of the fucking reward of a, f a focus, but with none of the risk. None of the commit. The real problem is the fucking... Siberian Express is basically a non-special move against someone good. Online hurts a little bit too, but it's really hard to actually land that. Siberian Express needs a better reason to use it. Like, there needs to be a reason that you would occasionally use it as a punish. 
Like, for example, I've had better Oki. I think it does have better Oki than SPD, but it's not worth going for. It doesn't have better Oki than hard SPD. Nice. Red focus definitely gets less reward and also commits way more, both between focus between the meter you spend and uh, the fact that you're locked into either a dash or a release. He's parries a lot better than focus attack. He's alright. Also, I completely disagree that a, a focus, a level two focus, leads to stun or death. They usually led to like um, 400 damage combos if you had ultra, and like 200, 250 damage combos if you didn't have ultra, and not that much stun either. Anyway, Geef had a really bad focus in Street Fighter 4. Ooh. I know that wasn't really relevant, but I just felt like saying it. Nice. Yes, the correct punish. <gasps> the Oh, never mind. He got the hard part, but then he missed the easy part. I got really excited, though, because he got the hard part. Ooh, very nice. Very, really hot anti-air combo. Oh, yeah, I see. It led to your full punish combos. Well, Geese Perry still leads to full punish combos. It's just that his full punish is literally an SPD. That's the actual problem with Heath. Ah, thank you, Kihara. I'm now picturing Hugo's penis killing, or Hugo's asshole crushing someone's penis. I saw a shock image like that one time. It wasn't like real, it was drawn. It was quite shocking, I was shocked. The parry will get a lot better over time. We're still in like the first year of the game. The parry has an extremely high ceiling when properly utilized. It's extremely easy to utilize as a punish against things like, uh, let's say, uh, Moonsault Flip from Nash. Like, that was discovered almost immediately. It's like, oh, hey, Geef literally doesn't need to block this. He can just instantly punish it. But the problem is using it in footsies is really complicated. It's hard to figure out when the when the risk reward is good for using that in footsies. Oh, dash in into hard. See, I've always used light. But dash in into hard is going to be way better on the characters it works on. I'm not gonna link it, I don't have it. You could probably find it. It was, um, uh, Miss Monday from One Piece. So if you went on Rule 34 and searched Miss Monday, you might find it somewhere. It was pretty gross. It was a pretty gross picture. Miss Monday is a pretty gross person. I think it was Miss Monday. It was the really fucking tall. It was like Nefer Nef Nefertari's uh, servant. Nice punish. Oh my god! Oh, he dropped it. Oh, the cross up didn't hit. Cross ups don't have a very good hitbox in this game if your character isn't moving left or right. Compared to Street Fighter V, where cross ups still basically work. What the fuck? Ah, there it is, towards, uh, towards strong. It's not even a, gim a gimp parry, it's an incredible parry. There's nothing gimped about it. And he is scary because he can make safe attacks uns unsafe. That's a big deal. It's a really good tool, dude. Aw, oh, no EX. Nice punish. I think Low Strong doesn't activate that move, so you can just do it as soon as you see. What the fuck? He got it too! <laughs> I haven't seen that in a long time. That's combo video material. Instant super after a corner super on some characters struggles correctly. And on certain characters, you can combo a DP after that. I don't know if Dudley is one of them, but Makoto is. Oh. 
俺いっぱい負けました。I lost to him. 本当に、うん DP as soon as he landed. Healing against Elena. I mean, against Mako. It's kind of weird. I like it. It's almost got that stun. Yum, nice combo. That's easier on a crutching opponent. It's good that he realized that he could pick that up. It, you have very little hit stun on cross up attacks. Comboing even into a light is really hard. Nice. That was an empty cancel. Empty cancels are good on Makoto because she does a lot of random dashing. Random dashing is rewarding for Makoto. She basically can't walk because her foot speed is crap. So she's got to rely on other movement options. And things that already beat those other movement options are incredibly good against her. That could have been a punish that wasn't a car throw. Car throw actually was an okay punish to be healed, but he didn't. He didn't heal. Oh, Lane is still on this very much so. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Using your opponent's Super 1 is a healing opportunity. Makoto's left full screen after that. That's actually smart. Makoto has a hard time chasing down stuns after landing that super. Of course, she's going to have a hard time punishing a healing. And she's not even expecting to go in. That was, like, surprisingly brilliant. Remember how I said Elena should burn all her meter immediately? Healing's the exception. I kind of secretly think the healing is um, by far Elena's best super. The only problem is just Elena has pretty good EX. And if you do healing, using EX is kind of hard. But healing is like actually like just definitively the best super for Elena. In terms of like, you know, actually using the super. Also has that problem that's harder to use against some kids characters and others. If you do a healing from full screen against uh, Chun-Li, you just get supered. If you do a healing from full screen against Makoto, she has a hard time punishing it. All of Alina's supers have a very good balance against each other. I would say super 2 and 3 are about equal in usage, and super 1 is a little bit less than both of them, but still like still sees use compared to most other, like like most characters, if they use two supers, they never ever touch the third. Elena and Ryu are pretty much, I think, the only two characters that actually use all three supers. Everyone else has at least one super that's basically a meme. Elena didn't do shit to 4. The only thing that did shit to 4 was people not knowing matchups. Elena was strong, but for reasons that no one fucking said. Elena was strong because she was a counter pressure character who had the best mix up in the entire game. That didn't belong there. She also had an unfairly high ceiling, which is the same problem that Evil Ryu had. Certain characters just like reach their highest potential of play a lot easier than others. And the characters are balanced not around their highest level of play, but their highest general level of play. Like if you were the Evil Ryu who never ever dropped links, your fucking damage output was so much better at almost no cost compared to like regular Ryu. That's like the cleanest, purest example. It's like Ryu has like slightly, slightly, slightly better footsies, but also slightly worse than footsies in, in several ways. And then you have um, um, another character who has like you know the, the slightly, slightly worse footsies, but then he's also got like literally double the damage on punishes. No, like everyone fucked up while it was strong. No one ever listed like the good reasons. Healing was not broken. Healing was not even particularly strong. The only thing even remotely broken about healing was that, that you didn't really need a setup to use it. It was that you could get setups off of anything, like throws. I don't think Vega was ever particularly strong in Street Fighter 4, nor do I think he was ever particularly annoying. I think that's actually exactly what I'm talking about, is people didn't learn the matchup and um, uh, cried. Nice god Okay. Nage. My bro. I don't think Vega had almost any, like, I don't think Vega kind of picked almost any characters at all. Vega just, like, had to rely a lot on, um, uh, 
player knowledge of matchups. They get some pretty big programmed in weaknesses. Elena probably shouldn't have had like EXT invincibility. <laughs> to be 100% honest, she should have been kind of a bitch when it came to rush down. She already was a little bit of a bitch when it came to rush down. That's where she had the hardest time. Dive kicks and shit. She could like jab a dive kick. Her jab was a reasonably good anti air. But like rushdown mix up she struggled against. She had to do one bar EX DP and three bars to make it safe. And her meter was really useful elsewhere, so wasting it on that was crap. But if you didn't waste it on that, you get your shit pushed in rushing down. There was like no one who couldn't break Vegas Turtling. Vegas Turtling was really bad, he can't even ATR. Her I mean, Vegas Turtling isn't bad, he's he's a counter pressure character. That's what he does. It's not a turtle, but it's like a different thing that's really similar. Vega couldn't actually hold down back, that's the thing. That's the difference between Vega and a turtle. Because the Vega wasn't actually blocking when he was playing defense. I think it was the same kind of character. But like, who's the character who didn't break Vegas turtling? Vega like never even had a strong tournament showing ever in the lifespan of the game. That was like Makoto one two four eight in the beginning in Super, who was pretty good. And I think there was one other like pretty good Super Vega. I saw pretty much no Vegas in AE because that was like the anti Vega edition. AE twenty twelve, I think there was like one guy, but I forget who. I remember Hori Tatsu. He was good in Super. I don't remember any Ultra Vegas either. I feel like Vega was only really strong in characters where they had a hard time not they had a hard time not being unsafe against his like attacks. He ex flying Barcelona and shit. Oh what the fuck was that? That was a really good parry and then he got nothing. He should have been able to react to the fact that it was universal overhead that he parried. I mean, it's true that Vega had bad counter picks, and that's why he wasn't tournament viable. It wasn't really his overall tier, but more that his worst matchup. You're right there. But shit, Hugo had like 10 times the worst matchups and fucking Alex Y had, wow. Deliberate drop in 3-2-1. No, he's actually doing it all the way. Oh, he messed up that setup. Oh my god. God plays. Huh? That's actually a pretty neat place to hide an overhead. Stolen. Okay, that was literally just a punish for the kill. Thanatos is an idiot sometimes. All Like, that was easily reactable. All he had to do was hit light kick and he won. Or like any button. Same medium kick is the go-to punish, but I'm just saying, like, literally any attack. He had three buttons where if he just hit them, he didn't have to play anymore. <laughs> the only characters I can really think of who Vega just absolutely bullied were T Hawk and uh, Blanca. Because he could get punishes that other characters couldn't easily get on a bunch of their attacks. They were balanced around certain attacks not being very punishable. That they could just shut down. Maybe not even T-Hawk. Maybe just Blanca. Ooh, very nice. Jump back medium kick. That was cool. That's kind of risky against Makoto because she's doing an axe kick. She actually gets a juggle on you. Like normally when you do a jump back attack, the worst thing that can happen to you is you eat an air to air. 
But the thing about Makoto is that her air dares can do um, like a third of your health. If it's like uh, Axe can into dash punch and TX dash punch. They're saying it's really hard to do the double tummy, the double Fukiyage on Ibuki and Oro. Ooh. I thought that was unthrowable. I'm actually really surprised that that just played out the way it did. That looked like hard uppercut. I thought all versions. Wow, she just dashed under Universal Overhead. I thought all versions of hard up of uppercut were unthrowable. That really surprised me that she just threw him out of it. That was a bit early. Lost a bit of damage. Gah. Thanatos is good. Ah, oh, he's so dead. Oh, nice. Aww. That was a pretty risky light kick. Aura had frame advantage there. He could have gotten thrown or hit. He probably cancelled that the dash punch, so it was effectively an unblockable light kick. But it was still, like, incredibly risky. Pretty whack play. I like it a lot. The target combo. In Street Fighter 4, that target combo, you could cancel the medium kick. So it's kind of like a Buki start combo in this game. But, um... Ooh. Ooh. That was cool. Good axe kick. That was like, really smart from both players. Anyway, that kick target combo doesn't do much in this game. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> E-Fox, what up? <laughs> that wiggling. I wonder if it was all parries. Uh, Low short into EX Oroshi. I mean, yeah, EX Oroshi. The Oroshi, that doesn't combo. That just works because it's low than overhead. The low basically doesn't factor. You don't react to the fact that it's low short and therefore you have to block high. Well, I guess you do, really. You can block any attack and then immediately block high against Makoto because she has only overheads and no lows. It's just a really fast overhead, that's all. Even in cancels, it's quite good. Ooh, chase down the back dash for the forward dash. Ah, that looked like a good read. Taihei is quite a good player. Ah. What did he do wrong? That looked like a fine setup. Was it the wrong version of the orb? That's a weird mistake to make. I didn't even look at which version of the orb it was. Maybe it's because he remained standing and didn't crouch. He was like not as wide. I don't know. I actually don't know why that didn't work. I usually do a different setup to get the cross up. Oh, weird. He's going for the corner. That cross is unblockable. She didn't quick stand. He could win off this. He did the right setup. Tommy kind of parried, but then ended up not being good for him. Got stunned. Very good, very good. The taunt. Stand jab taunt. <laughs> Ooh, early jump roundhouse. Whiffing air attacks is not so punishable in this game. Because most people aren't trying to anti-air you. There it is. That time it worked. He can win off this. Dash, 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 back dash, jump. He was too slow. It still worked. Makoto has the slowest, um, slowest wicket from the whole game. That was like a pretty bad flub at the end, but he still made it work somehow. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody, <laughs> 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 
Okay, gegen ja, gegen PC. Oh, super Sun, super Sun. Nice. Okay, that's something better than that. Ugh. Oh, you could cancel to chicken combo. If you get only second hit of stand strong, it's JP3. And then if you do walk in, stand strong into medium stomp, it's JP4, then 5. And then you can combo uppercut from there. What the fuck? Why on both counts are these supers what they are? Or I could have done light any armor to be invincible to that super. I think if he was a little bit later with the super one, it would have worked as well. Tell mm. me that Alex set up, throw Alex into the corner and then do meaty crutch. No, stand strong, hard fireball, cancel the super. Oh. That was it. And then if he jumps out of the super, he gets hit by the... Okay. Gets hit by the fireball and juggle. Very nice. You should do the full, yeah, regular ass combo. It is invincible, so the opponent does have to check their offense. So it's not useless. Ah, uh, those fairies are kind of far apart. Fairies. Why SCB? Why SCB versus Genki? This is a big deal. This is a match I would pay to see. And here it is for free. I'd pay a dollar to watch these two fight. I think there's an actual, like, decent... I feel like there's a decent, like, capacity. I shouldn't say capacity. Yeah, I guess capacity. There's potential for pay-per-view matches in Street Fighter that has been mostly untapped. Nice Nice, good confirm. Raw confirming your jump in is a very useful thing to watch out for. It's not very hard. Oh, that clap didn't hit. That clap can't combo. Pay per view potentials and like fucking. If like Snake Eyes versus fucking. I don't know. Infiltration. First to ten for like two dollars. Would you pay to see that? I'd probably shell out my two bucks just to watch. I don't know why I said Snake Eyes, I don't know why I said Infiltration. If there was a fucking Tokido versus Daigo first to 100. I'd hella shell out my dollar to see that. There should be more things that are like, like there's good money there that's not being that's not being touched. And that would help the players. That would help the pros be pros. Concept matches are a great idea in fucking everything else, but not esports, not yet.
They're having a couple Japanese pay-per-view events that are like, um, like I think they were like a bunch of first to seven kind of bullshits. <laughs> it would also be really useful just for, like, it'd be really useful just to have a lot more matches to pull from. If you're like, hey, like, I'm a guy who wants to play Hugo in Street Fighter 3, but I have no idea how Hugo fights Akuma. If you could just go on and fucking find a fucking giant log of Hugo versus Akuma, so that'd be super helpful for you. I'm only worried that, like, you know, the free streams would take a hit if people, if that got too popular. Like, people would be less willing to do, like, their regular ass tournament shit. But then you'd still have to do that shit. Nice, here we go. Here it begins. I don't know what he could have done to get out of that without dying, besides do a fuck ton of parries. It's so weird to even think about. He probably wasn't even ready for it. You have to parry like the first hits normally, and then as soon as Akuma gets close, you have to basically parry at double speed, and then hope that you started at the right time. This is a hard matchup for Hugo. It's not his worst matchup, but it damn it's a problem. Yeah, Guilty Gear is really good about that. For Street Fighter, you just gotta go to YouTube. Just gotta find the best player of your character, and then fucking search them plus the opponent's character. It's like I wanna fucking learn how Ibuki fights fucking Akuma. You gotta search fucking some good Ibuki. Aruka. And then search Akuma. Baton. Mitz. Josh. And that too is like destructive. Josh is like pathetic. Mitz is like destruction, rather. Josh. Josh. I kind of, I, I miss the days, like, the things Akuma says are kind of badass, but I prefer not understanding him. He sounds so terrifying when you don't even know what he's saying. That was probably an accidental secret. I don't know, maybe not. It's hard to say with Akuma players. That could have been a DP or it could have been an ATO super. Ah, that's really risky to drop. That's why a lot of people don't go for that shit. And when they do go for it, they go for light DP. Sobby shot for the shot for the moon. And unfortunately missed. Can what what what? Ne Hongo Ga Goa? That sounds like you're trying to ask me if I understand Japanese. But you like typed it weird as shit. Wekatemas? Ooh. I was crutching Akuma, that did a bunch of extra damage. This mirror is pretty cool, actually. Grand recovery on that attack is pretty long. Yo! Nice pickup! Really good awareness. 
<laughs> Very safe. Even if all of that was parried, it was not super risky. Just trying to move without taking any pl any big plays. This is really, really hard for match to win, but doable. Nakuma's an easy character to make a big comeback against, if only because his health and stun are bad. Oh, very nice reversal, Tatsu. Actually, non-reversal, but whatever. That was a pretty good one. Let's watch the next one. No, there's not anything after this. It's not enough time. This one's only 40 minutes. So this one's a week later. So there are a bunch of uh, players over for the 2016 Co-op Cup. That's why there were a bunch of uh, Westerners there. Fuck, I just said the same thing twice. Co-op Cup brought a bunch of foreigners and they were there for the um, GameSpot versus as well. No, there was literally no 12. I never ever see it. I see it in combo videos. I'm pretty sure that Alex can combo stand medium kick to... Wow, nice. Same medium kick to medium flash drop on a crouching opponent. But you never actually use medium flash drop as Alex, and it might require like a deep... One, getting a crouching opponent is pretty hard, and it might require like a deep, uh, a weird cancel or something like that. You think people would occasionally go for it if it did in fact work, even if it was crouching opponents only. <laughs> So it might be like, I've never actually tried it. I don't have training mode for this game. Ooh, all that power. Alex is pretty scary. This Necro heads off so many videos and he like rarely wins. That's the, that's the 12 player, isn't it? That Necro? Isn't that the same characters? Oh baby. Twice the Alex, twice the fun. Donchan. Like the fucking Tanuki. If you get anti-air stand strong in a scenario where it's guaranteed to work, like after an anti-air parry, you can do... You can just always do the cancel into EXP. It's guaranteed there. It adds a decent amount of damage, so I'm surprised you didn't go for it. Look at all the stun! Both of them above 50%. Oh my god, Alex Alex is so stupid. One touch will literally stun. Oh my god! That was fucking empty jump hyper bomb. Like, wake up jump into empty jump hyper bomb. That was scrubby as shit. I can't believe that worked. Hi why is he even running hyper bomb? Hyper Bomb you can jump out of post Super Freeze. It's like a Guy Ultra 2 or Ibuki Ultra 1 or I don't know. I can't think there's other examples. Uh, Laura and Mika Supers. If it's not a punish, you can just jump out and get a full jump in combo. So you need to have your Alex Super 1 as a punish or you need to use it as like... Uh, that's pretty much it. You've got a combo into it and the only combo is from medium or hard flash drop which are both impossible to like land. It's so hard to actually hit someone as they committed to an attack. That's what he just got. He got the start of frames of a throw with his hyper bomb. It is a really fast super. It's got one frame of startup, then it's active. Unfortunately, that's not even that fast in this game. There are a lot of supers that are that fast. But it really needs to be... There's no particular reason. See, that's what I'm talking about when I was talking about Alex last video. Is that um, there's no particular reason it shouldn't have just been a true 720. I know it's got a really short motion. It's just 360 plus punch. But, like, why wouldn't they just... Oh, nice. Why wouldn't they just make it fucking... A, tr a true 720. Like, you can't jump out. Like, why the fuck not? It's not a very good super. It really shouldn't be jumpable. It would be probably his best super, but not his best super by much. You would still see super 2 used occasionally. 
But it would probably be his best. It would it would probably be his best super. If you couldn't jump out, that would be a big deal. That'd be a really big deal. No, the more I think about it, the more I think that would be strong. It would need to be a double 720 motion, double double 360. If it was just a raw 360 and you could do it, it would be very very good. They should change the motion and then make it fucking. Honestly, even if they made it 360, it wouldn't really break him. It would just definitively be his best super. But it wouldn't like shoot him past Chun-Li or anything like that. The problem with supers like that is even if you have a really, really good one bar super, like fucking Ryu Super 2, um, it's only a factor when you actually have the super. And if it's a one bar super, then as soon as you use the super, you no longer have it. And you're like as far as you can possibly get from having it again. That's a problem. Nice clap. Really weird, bad combo. Claps are pretty great. Probably the best component of Hugo. That's safe-ish on Hugo. I think he can reversal super it. If you get, if you lose any one hit, we use left point blank. Oh, he went for anti-air crutch fierce. That's a really bad attack. You need to do it fucking early, and even then it can trade or lose. Nice. Jump in, jump out. Really good against Hugo. That looked like it wanted to be a dungeon. It was the actual dungeon. He was a baby. He didn't go for the jumping combo. It's not really a baby. He was just being really, really cautious. Most people can't shake out of that in time. But he wanted the guaranteed punish damage. Rather than even giving the possibility of the shake up. Kiraki playing Ken is the Elena player. Elena and Ken have a surprising amount of uh, similarity, to be honest, in their footsies. <sighs> nice cross up Tatsu. That's very unexplored tech in this game. I shouldn't say unexplored, more like it's it's there's not much to it. It's specific, it's highly specific tech. It's mostly impractical, being at the right range to actually get that that mix up and then having the timing to actually do it. Hurts what would be its utility. See that jump? When he did that double uh, parry, there was literally nothing else where you could do there. So he could hit stand fierce or air fierce and it would be a punish on the fireball. And he could react to that. So what he should have done was the air fierce and then landed and done super immediately. Or done low forward into super. But he didn't. But it would have been right. Damn. Tar combo, dash, and tar combo. I respect that. Da, that was an unsafe fireball. We could have swept that, I think, or at least low forward. Could have still think, damn it. Fireballs have huge pushback. And they rely on that for their safety. Nice parry. Nice anti air combo to disrupt the, the parry. Oh my god, non reversal. It's hard to get as a reversal. Uh, 
と続きまして登場が高橋さん。I'm waiting on what Kihar is about to remind me. There we go. That's true. I would even say they're maybe the, minor the majority. It is literally impossible to hear the fucking Fountain of Dreams song or Gusty Garden theme or anything like that. I think that it's bad music just because it was produced for a video game. Most of the music from Final Fantasy VII is extremely fucking good. Remember that game? Does anyone here remember DAE Final Fantasy VII? That's something that I always forget about when I'm replaying that game. Oh, that was just styling. He could have killed at any point. If he wanted to get badass. After getting the first parry, it was not that hard. He might have needed to parry twice before freeze. I mean, you never need to, but like... Damn, I saw a long fucking fight on YouTube comments that was like... Um, whether or not you need to parry Chun-Li Super bef uh, before the freeze. I already know the answer. You can start parrying after the freeze. It's hard. It's like one frame timing, but it's possible. But there was like a long fucking fight on whether people, whether it was possible or not. And I was just kind of surprised. Every time I see Ryuko for that, it never works. It really surprised me that there could be a fight that long about something with neither side testing it. I know it works because I've done it. But it was like a back and forth for like 60 posts. It's like you can do fucking. Daigo had to do the fucking parry before the freeze. No, no, you can only do the parry. You can still do the parry after the freeze. No, you can. It's impossible. Back and forth. It's just like, shut up. Anyway, when I replay Final Fantasy VII, I'm always really sensitive to whether or not it's actually good or just. Um, my nostalgia playing tricks on me. I shouldn't say always. I'm now pretty confident that it's actually really good. The point is, FF7 aged really badly in a lot of ways. For example, it's uh, graphics. But certain things are absolutely phenomenal and did not age at all. One of them is the music. I like the general like mm, purpose of the game, I guess. Your purpose as the character. I like the chasing component of it. It's very dynamic to be following someone else an entire game. Mostly in JRPGs, you're just kind of wandering around. I like the component of fucking going to places where Sephiroth just was. And like seeing the fucking destruction he wrought and shit like that. That's a really cool idea. It makes it feel very, um, it changes the, the, the spirit of the game a lot. I can't like eloquently put what I'm trying to say. You get a different feeling playing it. You know what I mean? ニート。さあ、勝利。続きまして、バルニャンさんお願いします。さあ、ニートさん仕上がっております。が、続く登場がバルニャンさん。さあ、フルの選択。さあ、これは荒さが強いんで、おお、しっかり。あれ、2ブロ。はい。SA2ではなく、なんか1なんですね、これね。These fucking footsies are so stupid. I've seen this matchup so many times. Yurian is the best character who still loses to Remy's footsies. The highest tier character who still can't get around these booms. This matchup is probably 5 5, but it's 5 5 in a very interesting way because Yurian is a really great character with a really bad matchup versus Remy, who is a really bad character with a really good matchup. That ends up tying them up.
It's always neat to see a matchup like this. Nice punish. That launcher is unsafe, but... <laughs> he went. Oh, it didn't do it. I thought that's. The, I thought that was the scenario where it did it. What is the scenario where it does it? There's some scenario where Remy can get a throw on um, Yurian with a meaty mirror, and it locks Yurian in place. I thought that was it. I thought that was it. I thought it was neutral throw with meaty mirror. Remy versus Yurian. Maybe it's forward throw. Maybe it's back throw. I actually have no idea. But I thought it was neutral throw. So what happens is Remy gets hit by the hitbox of the mirror. And Yurian is locked into the hit animation, but Remy can still move. And Yurian doesn't get knocked out of the animation until Remy touches him. Like, like attacks him. So Remy can literally just like knock. He can, he can get Yurian into that frozen state and then like get full screen and just whiff low strong until he's got full meter. And then get like a full jumping combo on, on Yurian. It's really dumb and hilarious. I've never seen it in a real match. I'm not even sure what would happen if they did it in a real match. I think it was one of the glitches that was repaired in uh, OE. They only fixed the actual bugs. I'm running my mods. i of my real life friends. No, not right now. Yeah, there's a decent number of people in here. Hi, everyone. I'm not even doing anything interesting. Oh. 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 Things could change very rapidly right now. Yes, yeah. Smart. Tekken was the first fighting game where I actually fought someone who knew what they were doing. I've lost plenty of times in fighting games before then, but like, when I lost in like Soul Calibur or when I lost in Mortal Kombat, it was due to someone mashing and being better at mashing than I was. But like, Tekken was the first fighting game where I actually fought someone where it was like, like they understood the game and what they were supposed to be doing. And I got fucking lit up. I remember it, it was a Nina player. No, Anna. It was Tekken 5 DR. Like right when that came out. I played a guy who was using like fucking tourney strats. He was like actually doing like full juggles and shit. And I was blown the fuck away. I was like, oh my god. This game is so different when you understand what you're actually doing. That was like a fucking transformative moment. I already liked fighting games. So it wasn't like the moment where I decided I liked fighting games. But it was a transformative moment in my life. It was like being good at a fighting game would be fucking incredible. I wanted to be that guy who like understood the fighting game to such a crazy degree that the other person wasn't even playing the same game as me. Which unfortunately has become true. No, this was like a sufficiently good Tekken player that mashing could not have worked. Eddie is actually fairly easy to destroy if you know what you're doing. He's one of the characters that's more easily deconstructed, as I understand it. Ooh, nice parry. You get a punish even if you block that, but if you parry, you get a better punish. Like, Oro can do stands medium kick as his punish. But if he parries it, he can do walk-in stand strong. Which is, of course, much better because that's your launcher. Interesting. He delayed his fireball and then cancelled the super. That's really weird that he did that and it worked. Ooh. Not fast enough. He teleported into the corner twice. I'm trying to waste some time.
、そんな感じのリード、さあここからですねどう崩していくか、DJ さんは相手に触りに行かないといけない。I really like the Rambu in Tekken 3, the opening. Down, 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 that one. It's a really cool little song. I always get hyped when I see that shit. I've always wanted an anime game that's fairly easy to pick up. I really like the idea, I really like the look of, of uh, Melty Blood. If I played any anime game, it would probably be that one so far. But we're going to try Nitro Plus Blasters literally later tonight. What are you doing, Akuma? Those are all pretty punishable. He could have walked in and crushed fierce any of those. He kept on not expecting Akuma to do it again. Shit, I'm going to get Ultra Street Fighter 2 day one. I'm not even embarrassed. I own, like, two other copies of Street Fighter 2. What else is going to come out on the Switch for us fighting game? Fucking guys. Day one. I don't even know if Ultra Street Fighter 2 is day one. I doubt it is. There's actually like like a couple fighting games announced, right? I know there's a bunch of fighting game peripherals announced. It's going to be like fucking arcade sticks and shit. USF 2 is getting changes. I think they added a throw tech, right? Or maybe that was just discussed. I, th I saw Vesper Arcade had a video on that, but I didn't actually see the announcement where they announced it. But one of the biggest things about Street Fighter 2 is that it doesn't have a throw tech. Or rather, teching throws, you still take the damage, but it just reduces the damage. If I recall correctly, um, USF 2 is not being made based on or rather, it's a different team that made. Uh, it's a different team than the team that made. It's definitely a different team than the team that made HDR, and I think it's using ST as its base instead of using HDR as its base. A throw tech is a really big deal in Street Fighter 2. That's that makes me like the game a lot more. It's probably still one button throws. It would be they would change a lot if they changed it to do button throws, but that's okay. One button throws are just fine. Uh, so attack is a big deal. That's gonna make a lot of characters a lot less stupid, like Chun Li. Yeah, Balrog and Ken and Chun Li are just not dumb now, and um, Dalsim. A lot of really strong characters just dominated because of their stupid throws, throwing you from outside your throw range, and then having loops. The thing about Evil Re and Violent Ken, okay, let's all lower our expectations just a little bit right now. The, thing, the reason it's Evil Re and Violent Ken is probably because they had fuck all for budget um, and couldn't draw new sprites. So they're just fucking recoloring sprites. If we get any new characters, they're just all gonna be recolors. Like maybe we'll get fucking Shinokuma. Maybe we'll get fucking Mecha Geef. Maybe we'll get fucking DiCaprio. Shit, I don't know. But we're not gonna get, um, we're not gonna get like Makoto. <laughs> the American SF2 community quite liked HDR. Japan never even had HDR released. I didn't know that until recently. Like, they, they, they literally, HDR wasn't released in Japan. Which is the, probably the main reason. It's one of the biggest reasons. The actual biggest reason is that no one who plays ST in Japan plays on console. They all just play in arcades. Akuma is in ST, actually. He's already in it. He's just a secret character. But you don't have to do anything to unlock him. He's unlocked from the get-go. AC Remix, some people didn't like it, some people liked it, some people didn't have any strong opinion on it. The main reason that people didn't like it, as I understand it, well obviously there's the people who say ST is a perfect game and doesn't need any changes, or it's like too late to change it. B basically equivalent to that. Which isn't entirely, that's that's totally subjective and I understand why someone would say it. Um, but a lot of people, like it tried to fix all the balance, but it just had equally bad balance in different directions. Like, yeah, Fei Long became a lot better. 
But like Kami was like as bad, for example. And Zangief was like as bad. A lot of characters that it tried to buff were like not really made any better. And a lot of the characters were nerfed successfully. So a lot of people hate their characters being nerfed. And then other characters they tried to nerf, but then kept them still strong. Like I think Chun Li was supposed to be like you know, I think she was supposed to be still strong as fuck, even though they like tried to nerf her. All her nerfs were actually secretly buffs, kind of like Kami in uh, AE. They nerfed Chun Li stuff that was broken, but then added new stuff that was like as broken. Something like that. ST Blanca is usually regarded as the worst character in the game. Honda is usually regarded as beats anyone without a fireball, loses anyone with a fireball. Blanca's slide was pretty good. Tunley is usually regarded as top 4. She has super storage, but she also has really good footsies and crazy range throw, and basically no weaknesses. She has a fireball that's fucking really good in a game where really good fireballs basically make you a great character. Blanca is a meme character. Meme characters can never be good. The one exception is Rufus. Ooh. The post KO super. Looks weird in this game. Note that he kept the meter. Kronitan is a very good Necro player. I like watching him play. Ooh, big punish. That's like his best punish early game, I guess. Not a whole lot to do when you don't have a super meter. Maybe you can get a hard spin, you do that, but generally you can't. One day, SNK will be so desperate for money that they'll actually consent to it. Kihara, you're referring to um, like stand short, stand fierce, hard spin into Ultra One on Balrog like mid screen juggle. That combo's strong as fuck, but let's not forget that Rufus can literally land meterless. Meterless Ultra One on anyone after a dive kick just by using his dark combo. Short roundhouse. Let's not forget that Rufus Ultra One is literally the easiest Ultra to land in Street Fighter 4. And he has a setup off of fucking everything. Messiah kick FADC. Messiah kick anti air. Um, like a. You got fucking anti air EX Messiah, I guess, just by itself with no follow up. KO14 did, it, it did better than they expected, that's all I know. They said that they expected it to do worse than it did. I don't actually know how well it sold. It usually sells like crazy in like places that don't matter. KOF does really well in like Latin America and it does really well in Korea. But it doesn't sell that well in America or Japan. Which have um, more people buying fighting games. And therefore more important markets. Season 3 characters, good lord. Blanca is a world warrior. So he's always got a decent chance of making it. I wish they would just enhance. I wish they would just enhance Blanca's fucking footsie components. And, and... Maybe not ignore? Yeah, China loves KOF. But tone down is fucking gimmick elements. I'm not sure if China doesn't play video games or if China doesn't pay for video games. I know for a fact that Chinese people have a shit ton of uh, MMO players. I think culturally they just like MMOs. It's very, it's very like the Chinese working culture, if you know what I mean. 
China culturally agrees with MMOs. But um, I don't hear that much about... Like, a lot of consoles don't get released in China, for example. It's like, how many video games can China really play if they never got the N64? I don't know if they got the N64. But you know what I'm trying to say. If it was, I didn't know. That would explain it. The thing is, I see like video game consoles all the time that are supposedly from China, and they're always like fucking like the weird PC, co the weird consoles, like the fucking like 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 shit that only exists there. And oftentimes, it's of course those knockoffs, like the fucking this plays PS1 games, but also has fucking a thousand PS1 games preloaded onto it, or shit like that. Club Ten Forest. I don't think I've ever seen that name here. Nice, good super. It's all that fucking weird, uh, uh, uh I don't want to say, yeah, bootleg shit. There you go. That's what I was going to say. Weird bootleg shit. The IQ was not bootleg, I think, but there's plenty of actual fucking N64 boys, if you know what I mean. Preloaded 64 games and also fucking individual carts sold with 32 games each. And of course, they're just ROMs. <laughs> China's a really weird place. I know a little bit about Chinese culture, and I know a little bit of Chinese language. Not a whole lot. But a little bit. I'd be so scared all the time of getting something shitty in, in China. I think even the Chinese people are afraid of that. I mean, it's dirt cheap, so how much can you really complain? There's so much cheap, shitty stuff in China. That was a nice parry. The trick there, what Tominaga did correctly, is whenever it's not really clear if you're going to be able to land and block in time, is to do start parrying and then react to the fact whether you landed or not during the parry, and then choose to block if you landed, which is exactly what Tominaga did. Thank God for Chinese production of shit, though. Remember how expensive like Pokemon Black and White and Diamond and Pearl used to be? But now you can just buy like reproduction cartridges, Chinese illegal reproduction cartridges of those games for like $10. And it's just the ROM on a fucking actual DS cart. So for all intents and purposes, it's the exact same shit. But they can produce it super cheap so they can sell it for $10 and undercut everyone. God bless China. If you pay absolutely no regard to um, trademarking or copyright law, you can um, save a lot of money. And that savings gets passed on to me when I buy cheap Chinese shit, which is all the time. Oh my god, that was probably supposed to be a super. He probably didn't mean to cross under. That was probably down, down forward, down forward, but he actually got it down back. China is a really big country. There are some garbage parts of it. There are some also really nice parts. It's easy to forget that China is fucking huge and has a fuck ton of people. The thing that actually terrifies me about China is that, um... Oh, what the fuck was that? What the fuck is going on? The thing that actually terrifies me about China is that, um... There's a very much of every man for itself culture going on. In the really urban parts. There's so many goddamn people. That there's like fucking... It's it's there's there's like this big public perception in China is like it's okay for me to break the rules because I need to do anything I can to get ahead because there's so many people. You know what I mean? I've seen that before. I don't know if I'm like hard stereotyping here, but that's something I tend to notice among like the Chinese citizens. There's this big perception of like um 
uh, uh, disregard for the rules for one's own benefit. Nice. Yes, he went for the big, big damage. Medium DP, even if they quick stand, I think is still generally safe. It does nice damage too. Chinese people are supposed to be really awful terrorists. Because of that kind of uh, rule disregard culture. Every man for his self culture. あ、<笑> I feel like there's not, um... Oh, I don't even think we're that close to worst tourist. We're supposed to be pretty good tourists because we spend a lot of money and we, like, try to fit in a little bit. Americans are supposed to be, like, quite high on the tourist list. I think France is supposed to be pretty low. France is supposed to not give a fuck about trying to blend in. Actually, a lot of Europe. I know America has literally the highest chance of any tourist of trying to learn the language of the country they go to. Which is kind of nice, I guess. That's a nice little claim to fame. Good super. <laughs> All mutt white people. I'm not against racial mixing at all. I'm extremely pro racial mixing. I think that I should get a dark girl and impregnate her. Indian would be fine. Either Indian. Black would also be fine. I'll take dark, dark Mexican too. Ooh, that parry. Was that a regular parry or a red parry? I can't actually tell. I think globalism is um a skill that must be learned. I think you don't start out being good at um, um, being able to visit some other country and behave yourself. To have some other culture, I should say, and behave yourself. I think people have to learn not to be selfish, and I think it's very similar um, with uh, that kind of thing. Very nice parry. That was really good footsies at the end by match. I think selfish is the inherent, and um, considerate is the, is the learn. Research against racial mixing. First I've heard. Alright, now what?